lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read Psalm 4, responding at the asterisk. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then, and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. You have put gladness in my heart. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, Jesus said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and Jesus said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Can you hear me all right? Yep. All right. Good. I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you this morning at St. David's, and thank you for your kind patience as we were um, late to dinner last night. I'm usually not late for dinner, by the way. <laughs> um, I think that shows, but... Um, I am grateful for your hospitality and your warm welcome here and just thrilled to be here with all of you this morning. We are in the season of Easter and we have celebrated the wonderful gift of Christ's resurrection, but where we are in this season is an awareness that truthfully the disciples didn't really get what was happening right away. They were traumatized by Jesus' death. Their dear friend, they had watched him die in a most excruciating way. And though the women had gone out to the tomb and seen either, depending on which um, gospel we read, they either saw Jesus or were told that Jesus had risen, they themselves were struggling. And Last week we heard the story of Thomas, who we've often called Doubting Thomas, but in fact Thomas asked the question that many of us ask. It's hard for me to believe, he said, and so show me your hands and your feet. The truth of it is, is the disciples, just like you and I, are very human suffering from doubt and confusion and sometimes when our lives get overwhelming. We feel as if God is far away from us and there is no peace in our lives. Jesus walks into this 
room of dear friends who, first of all, don't recognize him, and then when they finally do, they are terrified. They are scared, thinking he is a ghost. And finally, when he eats with them, when he takes food and sits down at table, they recognize their friend. So I want to reflect this morning a little bit on what it means to have God's peace, Christ's peace in the middle of all the challenges and traumas and confusion and sometimes doubts of our own life. And I want to reflect with you by telling you a story about my own life, about a time in my life when I was so sure that I knew exactly what I needed to do and how things were going to work. Uh, You were never like that when you were young. (laughs) Mark and I were expecting our first child, and we were going to raise her, you know, very carefully and make sure that she had everything that she needed, and I wasn't going to raise my daughter with the same sort of rules and regulations my parents had raised us with. And I thought I knew exactly how things were going to work. And then I had our daughter, Emily, and came home, and we had a wonderful visit from my parents. My parents had driven down to Baltimore to see us and were having to go back because my dad was um, due back for a service um, in New York. He was a Presbyterian minister. And so... We were doing okay the first couple days, and my parents visited and then headed home. And I was sure I knew how to handle everything that was coming up. (laughs) Really. I know. I learned very quickly. My mother had, you know, said, if I can do anything, just let me know. But she really gave me my space and my place. And about two weeks into life with a very colicky baby that would not sleep, I finally called up my mother and said, Mom, in tears, of course, please come and help me. I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) And she was on the next train down to see us and stayed long enough to help me get my feet underneath me, get some food and organization in the refrigerator to help me figure out how to do various different things. But what she said to me on that phone call was that, you know, I had my bags in the car, in the trunk of the car. And if you had just asked me, I would have stayed. And, but I wanted you to be able to ask. I want us to hear this story today recognizing that we often are sure of what's going on until we're not. And then we think that God has run away from us or is not with us or not present. Like those disciples, they didn't know how to react. And yet Jesus is not scolding, not giving them any sort of lecture as much as saying, here are my hands, here is my side. Let me eat with you, let me be part of your life. If we will but open our hearts and minds to Jesus, Jesus will come in and make a home with us. But sometimes, like me, we are stubborn, and I know I struggle with this all the time, we want to be independent, we want to do things on our own. And we don't like to ask to invite God in. But in our scriptures today, we hear that the peace of God comes in the midst of all sorts of difficult places, right? Not only when everything is calm and carefully laid out and when all things are organized, but when we are lost and confused and in pain and in grief, and torn apart by the things of the world or by the things in our family. God's love is so present, whether we recognize it or not. God's peace is available to us, whether we recognize it or not. My invitation today, as we 
celebrate this morning and this season of Easter is for us to open our hearts, to seek God's peace, to ask, please help me in our darkest moments for God's peace in Christ breaks in even in the midst of terrors and difficult children, difficult situations, difficult life situations. God promises to be with us and renew us and teach us and help us to heal despite all that we're facing. I want to end by singing you a hymn I learned as a small child. The problem or the gift, I should say, of being a PK, a preacher's kid, is spend a lot of time in church, <laughs> sing a lot of hymns. The thing I've learned about music is that we learn to sing before we learn to even talk. And sometimes, long after our memories have gone or words have left us, it is those tunes, that music, that reminds us. And this one has always reminded me of God's incredible love and peace for us, even when we don't recognize it or aren't even able to see it. And it goes like this. And if you know it, sing along. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this? Amen. One of the joys of being a bishop in this diocese is that um, both Alan and I, when we are in doing visitations, um, offer the opportunity for confirmation in the parish or reception and reaffirmation. And so today we have that joy together today. Several candidates have prepared for this day for reception into the Episcopal Church and reaffirmation of their lives as Episcopalians. We also open it if you are moved by the Spirit when we're all done with those who've come forward one by one if you would like to come and reaffirm your faith with the bishop. You are welcome to do that as well. So, those who are being presented, would you stand please with me? And Mark, would you present with me? I present these persons to be received and these persons to be reaffirmed. The first two questions are for those um, candidates for reception and reaffirmation. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? And this is for the entire congregation, so I expect a hearty response. 
Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. I invite you to stand as you are able. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will, with God's help. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to invite, um, you'll name folks one at a time, and they can come forward. Anybody would like to come and stand with them, I invite you to do so. Um, and as a show of support that we are all walking in faith together, this is not a private faith, but one that we do, um, as the disciples did, in community in supporting one another. reaffirmation. Um, just lean forward, I'm gonna. Elizabeth, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen.
Robin, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ in Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Julie, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and behold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. This is Jackie. Jackie, okay. That's right, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. 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 Yeah, you can. <laughs> I can only reach so far. <laughs> I need those long arms. David, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Pete, may the Holy Spirit, who has done a good work and begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, I'm going to start by holding your hand, and then I'll put my hands on your head. All right. Kathleen, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Janet, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Rich, I'm going to start by holding your hand, and I'll put my hands on your head, all right? Rich, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and always. Amen. Amen. Becky, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Stephen, right? Okay. Stephen, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Nancy, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Okay. Anna. Anna, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ in Christ's kingdom. Amen. 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 Diane, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. This is Deborah. For reaffirmation, right? Deborah, mm -hmm. may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. John, 
May the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Judy, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. 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 Janice. May the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you of the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Jean, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Janet, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Yes, I understand. Andy, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you direct and uphold you in the service of Christ in Christ's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? <laughs> All right. Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yep. Let's see if I can stand up here. There we go. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you so much. The slide is way. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. I think I'm going to go sit down. Good. That's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm good. Slowly. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all, especially eight o'clockers who came today. Yeah. Woo. I see you. I know who you are. And thank you, Bishop Carroll, for coming to St. David's. We know this is your first time ever. And so we have a few take-home gifts for you, our St. David's tote bag. And inside of that, a little trivet that has our, our beautiful um, Henry C. Bowles Sanctuary drawing on it. And we hope that that uh, adorns your table with many a hot plate in the future. I, I am, my daughter is often referred to me as a bag lady, so I'm thrilled, to have, I'm thrilled to have the trivet because I hopefully will be 
doing a lot more cooking in the coming weeks and months. So. Good. Um, and so you thought today was our busy day, but actually next weekend has a lot in store for us as well. Um, first, actually the whole week, we have our takeaway meal and paper pantry. So if you're a brownie baker, and if you haven't started uh, being a brownie baker, you can start tomorrow. We drop off brownies by 9 o'clock Monday morning so they can get packaged up and put into bags on Tuesday and the food goes out Wednesday. Tuesday I lied. Tuesday morning. Especially because it's Patriot's Day tomorrow, right? Um, and then next weekend, we have several events. There is our senior luncheon happening, and we're looking for some helpers to cook and offer rides. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the common room. We are having our Celtic Eucharist at 5 o'clock next Saturday with Father David Angelica, and we hope you come and bring a friend or a neighbor along. And then Sunday at 5 o'clock, we will be doing an art opening for the seven days of creation, which will be up in the common room. And it's painted art by um, Christine Fitzsimmons, one of our parishioners. And you've read about that in the newsletter. And hopefully you'll come and join us and talk to her more about her art next Sunday at 5 o'clock. So very busy weekend next weekend. And do remember the takeaway meal and paper pantry. Any birthdays in April? This is our birthday celebration Sunday. Yeah. All right. Now, I don't have my microphone on, so everybody, please pray the birthday prayer very loud so folks on YouTube can hear it. Watch over your servants, O Lord as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice for all.
Our service continues with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A found in your bulletin or in the prayer book on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who is sacrificed for and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, we, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace at the last day. Bring us with David of Wales, our patron, and all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blood of
Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food We send you forth, bearing the gifts of God that those to whom you go may share with us in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. We, we who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one God. Before I pronounce the final blessing, let me remind you that God's love is not far off. God's peace is nearby, and that if you are filled with Christ's peace and love today, please carry it from this place to a world that's in great need of love and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We did it.